First reading, a reading from the book of Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 to 9. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest part of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come. And with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The Word of the Lord. Second reading. A reading from the letter of Hebrews. Chapter 5. Verses 1 to 6 Every high priest, chosen from among mortals, is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wavered, since he himself is subject to weakness, and because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. They came to Jericho, as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Jesus Christ, today is the 30th uh, Sunday in Ordinary Time. And today in the Gospel, we find this beautiful story of Jesus healing the blind man uh, named uh, Bartimaeus. So in the story, we find uh, several places that we need to pay our attention. First of all, we find when this particular person, Bartimaeus, heard that Jesus is walking by, he shouts. And the people say, uh, 
uh, you will ask him not to shout like that. But he, then he, uh, the, the gospel tells us, shout small. And then finally, his, uh, his message is delivered to Jesus, or rather, he's being heard by Jesus, and Jesus calls him. And the gospel tells us once again that he went throwing off his cloak. And uh, then, finally, he's, he, uh, when Jesus asks, what do, you, what do you need from Bartimaeus? He says, point blank, very directly, I need to have my sight again. And then he follows Jesus. These particular instances or these, these, these things that underlies this particular story is worthy of noting. First of all, he shouts. At moments of our lives when we need something to happen, when a miracle should take place in our life, my dear friends, if we need healing, if we need conversion, if we need the grace of God, we need to work for that. We need to act accordingly. So, in this instance, this particular person was blind and he could, he could not do anything at all. He was helpless. The only possible instrument or rather the tool that he had was his voice. And he uses this voice. In our case also, at a particular situation, in order to receive grace, there is something that we can do. The thing is, we, we are worried so much about the things that we cannot do, we don't focus on the things that we can do, where we have the ability to do something. So in, in the case of Bartimaeus, it was his speech. But in our case, it can be something else, some other talent, some action, some, uh, even uh, some, some word, some thought, some quiet time on our part, some obedience to the will of God, some listening to one's parents, elders, teachers, for example. There is something, some particular thing that we need to do and that we can do in order to receive conversion, grace, or healing. We need to do that. Secondly, Jesus calls him, and he stands up and goes, throwing off his cloak. You know when, uh, when beggars beg money on the streets, they lay their cloak uh, in front of them, it is to that, on that clock, people uh, put money, coins. And finally, a person can gather that and uh, then collect it. That's how it, that's the custom. So, when he gets up, the gospel would tell us, he threw off his clock, which means he uh, let those coins roll away. Why? He was begging because he did not have sight. He know now for sure, he knows for sure, when I go to Jesus Christ, I will receive sight. Therefore, I, don't, I do not need this my old life anymore. My old life like a beggar ends today. He ends that old life before he moved on to the new life. How convinced he was about the healing. My dear friends, what about us? In our lives, we, do we have that conviction? Something that we can ask. Many a times they are not. We pray on feast days that there will be no rain. But in fact, we take our umbrellas with us. That's the type of mentality that we have about faith. Today, this beautiful uh, story from the gospel invites us to think about our own life. If we need a miracle to happen, work for it and know for sure that it would happen 
be convinced of the grace of God. Amen.